So the Patriots signed Cam Newton. Obviously trying to make a push to once again try to fight for that AFC East title. Alright, as an Eagle fan, what does it mean? Does Cam Newton significantly improve the New England Patriots? Alright y'all, let's jump into today's topic y'all. Alright, let's get it. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, division rivals? This is Steven Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you get around to watching this. Once again, my name is Steven Heider, and this is Gate City Sports Channel. All right, guys, so today's topic. Listen, I just want to come on, um, spend a little time, guys. I'm about to go away for my birthday. I'm actually getting ready to go on a little little beach getaway. Don't worry, I'm going to be socially distanced from people. No crazy crap going on. Um, but look, some news broke. This is Sunday night when I'm recording this, guys. Some news broke. Cam Newton has signed with the New England Patriots. And a uh, bit of an unexpected move, in, in my opinion. Not, not something that I necessarily saw coming, but probably a, a fairly smart move on the part of New England, if I'm going to be quite honest about the situation that they're in. Um, I was really thinking about it and what Cam Newton could bring to the New England Patriots. And the truth be told, if I were New England, I was choosing between Jared Stidham or Cam Newton. I, I would roll with Cam Newton myself, to be quite honest. Um, Cam's an interesting kind of candidate for them because in some ways he's drastically different from Tom Brady. In other ways, there are some similarities to the to the game of these two guys. Um, just for some for instance here, guys. Let's talk a little bit about some of the advanced analytics that can provide a little insight into Cam Newton. So, to begin with, Cam Newton's time to throw. His average time to throw in 2018 because it's last year that he had statistical stats that can be traced. His time to throw back in 2018, he took, on average, 2.69 seconds. Okay, so this is an average kind of thing here. If you compare him to, you know, basically his predecessor, Tom Brady in New England, 2.62 seconds. Uh, Carson Wentz, 2.66 uh, Dak Prescott, just to add a little more onto it, 2.82 seconds back in 2018. So just to give you guys context of certain things. So he's a decent processor, gets the ball out of his hands somewhat quickly. Now, whether he's seeing what he thinks he sees well, I mean, that's a whole other debate, but makes the decisions relatively quickly and gets the ball out of his hands. His completed air yards, right? So this is where on average the balls are completed, all right? Five yards, five yard completed air yard average. His predecessor, Tom Brady, 5.6. Carson Wentz in 2018, 5.8. Dak Prescott in 2018, 5.5. So he's clearly on the bottom end of that, so he was definitely not completing the ball quite as far down the field, but relatively in the area of those guys. Targeted air yards, okay? His targeted air yard numbers, 7.1. So this is where he intended to throw the ball on average, right? Not necessarily where it got completed, but where the intent was. 7.1 yards, okay? Uh, compare that to Tom Brady in 2018, 7.7 yards. Compare that to Carson Wentz in 2018, 7.8 yards. Compare it to Dak Prescott in 2018, 7.6 yards. So he was checking the ball down, not quite getting it down the field quite as often or as much as guys like Tom Brady, Carson Wentz, and Dak Prescott back in 2018. His aggressive percentage, right? So aggressive percentage just means the amount of times that you throw into coverage that's deemed to be tight coverage, right? So we're talking about one yard or less. 17.1%, okay? You look at that, Tom Brady, 13.9%. So Tom's not a very aggressive quarterback. Uh, Carson Wentz, 16%. Dak Prescott, 17.7%. Uh, sorry, guys, fireworks going off around us. Aggressive percentage, 17.1%. He's way more aggressive with the football in terms of throwing in a tighter coverage than a guy like Tom Brady was. And you could see Tom Brady's numbers actually inflated this past year with the aggressive percentage. And that was probably largely due to the, the lack of weapons around him where he was forced more into making those type of throws and making those type of decisions. Okay, air yards to the sticks, which I think is a really good measurement if you're trying to look at our quarterbacks checking it down in general. So his air yards to the sticks were negative 1.7. Compare that to Tom Brady's negative 1.1. Compare that to Carson Wentz's negative 1.1. And compare that to Dak Prescott's negative 1.5. So Dak and, in general, Cam Newton were checking the ball down a little more in 2018 than guys like Carson and Tom Brady were. Now, 
the way air yards to the sticks works, guys, is it's a measurement of how far up from the first down marker, on average, the ball is being completed. So on average, he's throwing nearly two yards short of the, of the marker, while guys like Tom Brady and Carson Wentz are a little closer to that one yard mark, one yard short of the marker. These are some of just the raw data on them, guys. I mean, I don't have time to really break down film. Uh, there's some basic generic things we can say about, you know, Cam Newton compared to Tom Brady. Uh, Cam Newton is going to be somewhat of a check down guy, just like Tom kind of was at the end of his career there. Uh, but Cam's going to bring some athleticism that New England hasn't had. Let's just be up front and let's be honest, guys. Uh, Cam Newton, can he can make plays. He's an athlete. That's going to be an interesting to dynamic to see if New England can be creative enough to actually utilize his athleticism as an advantage. Uh, some other things to kind of discuss and talk about, guys. Sorry, I didn't mean to have that that close on me. Uh, let's talk about, we can look at things like the like the quarterback breakdowns of like, um, uh, the they're called QB charts, guys. And it's just rates where the, where the passer rating happens in terms of distance. So when we look at where he was the absolute worst in 2018, okay, so, Deep right side of the field on throws that are deeper than 20 yards. When we look at those QB charts, I mean, guys, he had a 1.7 QBR rating. Now, it just could have been he just didn't take a lot of shots there. So if you miss one or two shots there and that's the only shots you've taken, you, you know, I mean, look, I mean, it's going to affect your it's going to affect your QBR rating a lot. Now, some areas on the field where he was pretty good at is if you really look at that area, if you go back to the right side of the field and look at that area just short of 20 yards. So 10 to 20 yards, right? That intermediate route level, like where you would target a tight end, guys, or a slot receiver. He had 108.1 QBR rating. He was, you know, in the great category, the good category amongst quarterbacks. He had a very high QBR rating there, guys. You look at something like um, the short left in an area where you would expect some quick outs, you know, maybe some dump offs to, to the running back, you know, getting, let's be honest, getting CMC. Christian McCaffrey involved in the offense, right? He had a 126.8 QBR rating there when we're talking about that short left. So from the line of scrimmage all the way out to 10-yard marker. Uh, he had a very, very high percentage on those type of plays, guys. I mean, his QBR rating was very, very high on those plays, if we're going to be honest about it. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to get the depth of this camera right here. Um, hard to really make out what to expect from Cam Newton here, guys. These are just some initial thoughts about the signing and, and what I think about everything going on there. Um... You know, look, I definitely think it's a better move for them than Jarrett Stidham. Do I think that this makes them favorites in the AFC East? I wouldn't go that far, guys. I don't think this makes them a favorite, in my opinion. I think this makes them certainly more competitive in the AFC East. I think this at least gives them a fighting chance against Buffalo, right? I think Miami's much improved. I don't know what's going on with the Jets. I'm not going to make any predictions about the Jets. I think their talent level is getting a little better, but we'll have to see if Sam Darnold can live up to that draft pick and if they can get that whole organization under control and, and start making, you know, progress there. Because let's be real, the progress has been lack, has been really lacking there, guys, if we're going to be quite honest about everything. But look, these are my thoughts on this, you know, situation, this signing. Um, look, I, I think that it was a good move for New England. But, you know, if I'm going to sit there and project the AFC East, I still don't know that I give New England the upper hand right now. I think Buffalo has that upper hand. Um, but I certainly think it makes them at least competitive again. I think the other thing we can talk about on this situation, guys, is the concept of was New England trying to, you know, tank to, you know, go up and, and get a high draft pick and target a quarterback early in the first round next year. I would think that, you know, having Stidham there and now having, you know, a guy like Cam Newton would seem to indicate to me that they're at least making an attempt to not tank it. You know what I mean? They're not looking at tanking, in my opinion, if you're making moves like that. Now, I mean, you know, we, we can argue this in different ways, guys, but that would seem to indicate to me a, a true, honest effort to try to at least make this team competitive. Um, we'll have to see, man. I mean, he's still going to be dealing with, you know, Nikhil Harry. Is he going to be right? Will he be a weapon for, you know, Cam Newton out there? I mean, can they establish a running game? Or is Cam Net Newton going to be a, a major part of that New England running game? We can look at, you know, Outside of, I mean, what do they got? Julian Edelman in the slot? I mean, I just, I don't know that they have a lot to really work with there. I think they have Mohamed Sanu unless he was only on a one-year deal on that contract. I can't remember, guys. I don't have it in front of me. But, you know, it's it, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, I'm trying to give an impartial view being an Eagles fan. I don't really have a, you know, I don't have a, a dog in this race. I mean, 
it, it, it seems to be a move to, to try to honestly compete, but I don't know that it makes them the favorites. That's my take on this right now, to be quite honest. I think it makes them competitive. I don't think it makes them necessarily the favorite. But Cam Newton's going to have a heck of a defense there. And Cam Newton's benefited from some really good defenses in Carolina. He's going to really ben- benefit from an outstanding defense right now with New England. These are my thoughts, guys. But you know I'm going to ask you. I want to know, what do you guys think? All right, guys, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about this signing. I thought this was pretty big news, so I wanted to come on and just, you know, leave some thoughts here, guys. All right, y'all. I'm going to try to do some lives. I'll try to do some other stuff while I'm on vacation so I don't leave you with no content. But, uh, yeah, man, this was pretty big news. I wanted to make sure I got out there and, you know, kind of left my thoughts here. Sorry, guys, man. These fireworks. These people are going crazy out here with these fireworks, man. It's been like that for, like, the past week. All right, y'all. Y'all know what time it is, man. You know how I sign off these videos. I do a little E-A-G-L-E-S. Sorry about the shaky camera work, guys. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's go, Eagles. Peace.